Travis Wayne Goodzell. I uh, wanted, I was curious to know which platform uh, Joseph Smith Jr. was when he ran for president of the United States in 1844. Uh, he ran on the Reform Party, which was of his own creation. and uh, found that Jake Tapper uh, for the for ABC News at that time uh, did an article uh, the first Mormon presidential candidate and so he was running against uh, what who became President Polk uh, who was a, of the Democrat Party back then. Completely different platform than the Democrats of today. And so this article uh, I had found on the uh, Wikipedia site talking about Joseph Smith's presidency. Uh, it linked me over to the ABC News uh, report from December 6, 2007. And of course, it was talking about Mitt Romney running for president. Um, and so I'll, I'll read it to you guys. Uh, but I'll skip the part about Romney. Uh, but the first Mormon to seek the White House was also the first Mormon, Joseph Smith Jr., the founder of the Mormon Church, whose 1844 presidential campaign is historically notable. Uh, well done, Jake Tapper, because uh, everybody else, even Mormons, don't fully understand this. Not only because it was the first one in which, uh, let's see, whose 1844 presidential campaign is historically notable, not only because uh, Weirdly worded, Jake. <laughs> because it is, it was the first one in which the candidate was assassinated. Uh, so remove the knot. <laughs> Smith's campaign 163 years ago uh, was quite a bit different than Romney's, of course. Uh, Romney, 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 Romney. Mormonism by name, rules and constitution. So, yeah, if you remember Romney talking about his faith, making the decision based on a constituent in the state of Utah in West Valley City by some unknown person who gets blocked on YouTube. I have no idea who he would be who would have linked him to the Book of Mormon to remind him of Mosiah chapter 29. And now Romney has got death threats from his own party. Uh, let's see. First Mormon to seek the White House. Smith directly pushed what he called theo-democracy. <laughs> the blending of religious belief and democracy. He was trying to be the Messiah, guys. That's what I've been telling you. Uh, and his campaign was rooted entirely within the church that he founded. Uh, and the Freemasons of the York Rites, if you're paying attention to all my videos. At the April 1844 LDS General Conference, 224 church elders heeded the call to volunteer for Smith's campaign. Or were they <laughs> appointed to that position? Hundreds of Mormons traveled the United States to spread the word, not just of Smith's prophecies, but his candidacy. No, it wasn't prophecies, it was the Book of Mormon. He wasn't even pushing the Heavenly Father visitation that the current church is pushing instead. Many of them met with angry mobs and violence gap yeah, because the Danites had infiltrated the Mormon church. And people were blaming 
Joseph for that infiltration. Uh, there is not a nation or a dynasty now occupying the earth which acknowledges Almighty God as their lawgiver. Smith told the neighbor newspaper in Nauvoo, Illinois. I'm willing to bet that's, uh, I can't remember his first name, um, Brother Niver. I'm guessing, who uh, married into um, my dad's family, and who have a, a great uh, hot springs up there in uh, Idaho. I did that video a long time ago, uh, where the church brethren were on board. I go emphatically, virtuously, and humanely for the theo-democracy, where God and the people hold the power to conduct the affairs of men in righteousness. Announcing his candidacy, January 29th, 1844. Uh -huh. uh, Smith told his supporters, tell the people we have had Whig and Democrat presidents long enough. <laughs> Not that long. <laughs> As I was looking over the <laughs> list of presidents, uh, yes, there were Whigs, a couple of them, I think. Uh, but then uh, uh, the Democrat Republicans, started by Thomas Jefferson, uh, was the dominant one. They were three in a row, I think. And uh, uh, and then the Federalist, which wasn't really a party, it was just a club he was a part of. So the Federalist Papers, for example. Um, but uh, and then George Washington was unaffiliated; he was a general in the war. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that statement by Joseph is funny. <laughs> we want a president of the United States. So, no more party groups is what he's saying. No more communism. We want a president. To Smith's detractors, his presidential run could only be seen within the context of megalomaniac, meta, meta, megalomaniacal madness. Mormon historians, however, argue that Smith was trying to stand for his principles. <laughs> argue publicly for civil liberties for Mormons and publicize the church. <sighs> Jake. According <laughs> to, uh, let's see. Uh, they had a, Smith supporters even had their own catchy cheer, Kinderhook Kas Calhoun, or Clay Can never surely win the day. But if you want to know who can, you'll find in General Smith the man. Um, KKK? I don't think they were supporters of Joseph. Or did they... Or did the Scottish Rites say, hey, we just murdered this guy through Brigham Young, our agent. Why don't we pull a little stunt and name the KKK after our confederacy that got defeated in the civil rights movement? Who knows? We have to do a full investigation of historical background on that one. All right, Smith's presidential run came approximately 25 years after he claimed to have first seen God and Jesus in Palmyra, New York, 21 years after he was visited by a resurrected prophet Moroni, Nephi, Jake, Nephi. <laughs> the church has deceived you. You're trusting the church's information. And 17 years after he announced his discovery of a long-buried book, <laughs> Lord's dealings with early Israelite inhabitants of Americas. See, this is another thing. When you get people reporting 
and they assume certain things. So instead of plates, he just says book. And so that conjures into the minds of the people in 2007 uh, a paperback book <laughs> was buried. And they don't understand that plates was a specific symbolism having to do with the Knights Templar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you're going to be a reporter, Jake, <laughs> you got to get your information correct. You got to present that information correct because if people are going to use you as the source for understanding Mormons, they're going to be misled. Uh, let's see. Questions about Smith's teachings remain hotly contested well into the 21st century. Just this week, Romney faced questions about African Americans. Well, they were fence sitters in pre mortality. <laughs> Therefore, they were cursed with skin color. <laughs> uh. Uh, I'm going to have to take a break here in a couple minutes. Uh, let's see. Uh, blacks have long been derided as inferior people in some Mormon teachings. Some? <laughs> Try since Joseph's death, all since 1978. <laughs> oh, man. Priests? No, Jake. High priests. Not priests. Uh, so, Melchizedek priesthood holders. Although all priesthood, even in the Ronic. But uh, specifically, the Melchizedek priesthood was denied to blacks to prevent them from going in the temple and getting sealed for time and all eternity. And then thus prevent them from being polygamist. <laughs> the South Carolina state co-chair of the Fred Thompson for President campaign, Cindy Mostella, this week told the Palmetto Scoop website that voters will question the church's history and almost theology on the issue of race. Well, and that's a distraction the church wanted you to pull. And in that context, it's interesting to note that the Smith's campaign in 1844 sought to end slavery. So, there you go. Brigham Young had slaves, but not Joseph. Although he did have the 14-year-old maid, which the Bennett was upset about uh, Joseph for being excommunicated for adultery so he then tried to accuse Joseph of having sex with that 14 year old girl who never got pregnant by him and uh, uh, David Whitmer uh, near the end of his life wrote that little book thing Believers in Christ and uh, said that uh, Brigham Young had claimed that Joseph Smith wrote section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants and said, yeah, I knew it. I knew because Bennett was saying that that 14-year-old girl, I, I knew there was something going on. I just knew. <laughs> so again, there is nothing except for people's hatred. Smith's solution was gradualist to purchase the freedom of slaves with funds. Amassed by the reduction in the size of Congress. Pay for members of Congress and the sale of public lands. He was not an abolitionist in the strictest sense. He felt slavery was not right and saw the need to abolish slavery. Hold on just a second while I take care of this other thing. 
Realize the need to save the economy of the South, uh, he refused to take the extreme abolitionist point. So, uh, yeah, if he completely did away with slavery, uh, the economy would have collapsed and the United States was already suffering financially. That's why uh, 1871, that act made the DC the independent non-American state and uh, uh, made it America a corporation rather than a country. Uh, let's see, these and other views were published in Smith's campaign book. I need his campaign book. <gasps> oh, it's on the site. Yeah. Let's see, what, let me make sure that is the link. It's not letting me... Copy hyperlink. There we go. We're going to get this while I'm talking about it here. General Smith's views of the powers and policy of government of the United States. Um, Jacksonian Pre Prist? What? Print, Pontiac, Michigan. Huh. It uh, doesn't seem like it's allowing. Here's a download. Is it for just this picture? Or is it... It is the picture. <sighs> yeah. Alright, so let me see if somebody else has put it out there for the public. Uh, General Smith's Views of the powers and policy of government of the United States. General Smith's views of the powers. Yeah, Google recognizes it. Policy of the government. PDF. Okay, it's in the Joseph Smith Papers. BatterdayTruth.org. There we go. It's just eight pages. Yeah. Two columns of pretty fine print. But yeah. There we go. And it is now mine. Mine! <laughs> Given it the file name of 100532. Uh, let's see. Joseph Smith Presidential Platform. Alrighty. Uh, okay. Thanks, Jake. Uh, in his campaign book, Smith outlined a six-point platform, gradually ending slavery, reducing the size of Congress by at least two-thirds, re-establishing a national bank. Joseph, what are you doing? National, not central, right? I think it was restored... Because Andrew Jackson did away with the central bank uh, owned and operated by uh, Nathaniel Rothschild, uh, which was why he 
uh, got furious with Congress in the first place when they first did away with the, the uh, his central bank, and then thus caused the War of 1812. Uh, so maybe Joseph was thinking a national rather than a central. Annexing Texas. <laughs> Texans will not replace us. <laughs> California and Oregon. Annexing? Huh. Gonna curious about that. Huh. anyway. Uh, and then he had prison reform. <laughs> Wonder why he wants prison reform. <laughs> Seer gazers can now <laughs> walk freely in our streets without the fear <laughs> of stop and frisk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if only I could figure out a short title for this video, <laughs> rather than typing in one humongous paragraph, <laughs> Joseph ran for president to prevent being arrested as a seer gazer. <laughs> And a position near and dear to Mormons at the time, empowering the federal government to protect the liberties of minorities from mobocracy. <sighs> Referring specifically to the Governor Boggs, who had used the, his state militia to evict Mormons from the home state of Missouri in 1838. Smith wanted to ensure federal civil rights protections even if a governor himself were a mobber. So civil rights, yeah, Joseph was going to give women equal rights as well and that's not mentioned in here by Jake. And so uh, for the church to say hell no to the equal rights amendment not the equality, which they also oppose, but the Equal Rights Amendment from back in the Civil Rights days, and which, if Utah were to uh, approve, they could uh, get it passed in America. And, oh well. Uh, though Smith enjoyed support from his followers, his support for polygamy started in 1841. No, Jake. No, don't listen to the current church. They're lying. He was not practicing polygamy. There is no evidence of it. But notice they're saying 1841. A rival paper, the Nauvoo Expositor. I wonder if Bennett was in charge of that. Now, questioned whether Smith could serve as a federal and local official at the same time. Find their friend, the neighbor, advocates the claims of General Joseph Smith for the presidency. We also see from the records of the grand jury of Hancock County at their recent term that the general is a candidate to represent the branch of the state government at Alton Prison. We would respectfully suggest to the neighbor whether the two offices are not incompatible with each other. Smith had an interesting concept of the First Amendment, one that might make Romney's attitude towards the Boston Globe seem downright friendly. Working with the Nauvoo City Council, no he didn't, he didn't attend that meeting. Guys, he was not there! It was held without his presence. He did not consent. It was not there. It did not happen. The church is lying. <laughs> So the 
Expositors printing press seized and every copy of the newspaper you could find burned. No! <laughs> he wrote a letter in the neighbor accusing the rival newspaper of plotting the destruction of the institution of, his, of this city to rid the city of a paper so filthy and pestilential has this become the duty of every good citizen who loves good order and morality. <sighs> it was not at the meeting, but they took that quote and said, yeah, we're going to follow Joseph's orders and uh, go and do it ourselves. If he didn't order it, don't do it. Uh, the controversy combined as it was with other questions about Smith's leadership and charges brought against him by the government soon spiraled out of control. Smith was, no, not killed, murdered. Soldiers kill. Cars kill. People murder. By an angry mob. No, Jake! He was shot in the back by Willard Richards as uh, John Taylor had murdered Hiram Smith. But many of his electioneers spread throughout the country to campaign for him uh, and continued on their journeys. Uh, referring to Smith as a martyr, they now take up his religion, not his White House hopes. No, did you not understand what happened after Joseph was murdered with a certain branch that had headed to Salt Lake City? Oh, he not only became president, he became king of Deseret. Huh. Well, that's a complete change, and he issued slavery, denied slaves the priesthood, denied women the priesthood, and had them vote only as long as they would support polygamy. <laughs> so, uh, so, nice attempt, Jake. You have a few things in here that we can branch off to do further research to figure out what really is going on, but yeah, you should have done more research, Jake. Alrighty. So I thought I'd share that with you. He was a part of the Reform Party, is what he called it. And uh, America was still brand new, and he's wanting to reform it. Uh, because, as you saw in the quote, he wasn't happy with uh, Socialist Republic. Communism. And... Uh, and so he wanted to stop that. And then several other issues on his campaign platform that I now have in my possession. Yay! Technology! Alrighty.